Hello and welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Berec and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, the series of videos designed to teach how to play various board games. Today we're going to learn the game called Abomination, the heir to Frankenstein, and as you can see I have received a localized version already. Don't worry, where it's really necessary you will see an English text over the local text, and in a nutshell it's a worker placement game with a very specific theme but very strong theme, and here is how it plays. First, place the game board in the middle of the table. Find this Leopold card in the public square deck and set it aside somewhere next to the game board. Then sort and shuffle these four cadaver decks. Place the morgue deck to the corresponding space on the game board face up, then the cemetery deck face down, then the hospital deck and the public square deck face down next to the game board, and then take as many cards from the hospital deck as there are players in the game, and place this small pile of cards to the hospital space on the game board. Then place the deck of scoundrel cards next to the docks and place three cards face up. Place the deck of research cards next to academy and draw two cards face up. And the deck of humanity cards next to the church and draw two cards face up. Place this event board somewhere next to the main board. Randomly draw six event cards and four encounter cards and shuffle them all together and add two more random event cards on top of this deck. These 12 cards form the so-called event deck. Because all these cards are double-sided, place this card on top of the entire deck. Place this event deck on the event board and make sure you have these event markers nearby. Then place this Captain Meeple on the first space of the event track. If you have a two or three player game, place this bribe and bump tile on the game board. The bribe and bump track for the 4 player game is already pre-printed on the game board, so if you play with a lower player count, place this tile on top of it. Then randomly draw 4 objective tiles and place them to this spot on the game board. Give each player one random character card, one anatomy card, then this laboratory board and set the level of humanity to 0 and reputation and expertise to 1. Then each player will get as many francs as there are players in the game, so in a three-player game we'll have three francs. And all scientists and assistants in one color. These larger meeples are scientists, the smaller ones are assistants. Now place one scientist and two assistants to the character card, put rest of the meeples aside. Finally place all the scoring markers to the zero space of the scoring track, Randomly determine the starting player and we're ready to go. In this game, players are trying, for various reasons, to create a similar monster as Victor Frankenstein did. In a nutshell, Abomination is a worker placement game where players will visit various locations of the city of Paris to gain some dead bodies in more or less human way. Players will also need to increase their expertise and reputation, and if they wish so, they can also try to preserve their humanity. By collecting these dead bodies, they will gain these materials which are required for building the monster. Over the course of the game, players will score victory points by constructing various parts of the monster body, and then at the end of the game, they will score bonus victory points for each body part that has been brought to life, they will gain or lose victory points based on their humanity and they can score additional victory points by increasing their reputation and expertise. In addition, they can also earn some victory points by completing these objectives. Whoever has the most points in the end of the game is the winner. Abomination is played over a series of rounds. Each round has four phases. First phase is the event phase, where players will draw and resolve one card from this event deck. The second phase is a city phase, which is actually a worker placement phase, where players will place their meeples onto various locations on the game board. In the third phase, the laboratory phase, players will try to build various parts of the monster. The final fourth phase is called a reset phase, which is actually a cleanup and a preparation for the next round. So in the event phase, first player will draw and resolve the top card from the event deck. Because the cards are double-sided, you need to locate which side of the card corresponds to the current round of the game. Then 
Events can have some permanent or immediate effect. If needed, you can use these event markers as a reminder on the game board. If you draw the encounter card and it is triggered now, the first player would read the card aloud and you would then resolve the effect. Some encounters are targeted and if the first player can choose anyone, he can really choose anyone, even himself. If he would target himself, other players would have to read the card for him. If the card effect would refer to an entry, like in this case B13, you can find all these entries at the end of the rulebook. And finally, there are two icons you can find on some of the event cards. This icon indicates the execution. In a two-player game, draw one card from the public square deck and place it face up on the corresponding location. In a three or four-player games, draw and place face up two cards. Execution is the only time in the game when these cards are actually replenished. This icon indicates there is a lightning storm. Lightning storm enables players to charge their uncharged laden jars and if they would gain any laden jar during the round, they would place it with the charged side face up on their laboratory board. In a city phase, starting with the first player, that's the player with this big black meeple, and then continuing in a clockwise direction, players take turns. On your turn, you can place one of your meeples on a location on a game board or on a laboratory board. There are two types of worker placement spots in this game. This one can be occupied either by a scientist or by an assistant. These spots can only be occupied by a scientist. If the location has this coin symbol, you need to pay that many francs in order to take that action. If there is another meeple on a location, you can actually bump that meeple. However, you can only do that if there is any free spot in this bribe and bump location. Move the bumped meeple to the first available space on the bump track and pay the cost indicated under that spot. If you want, you can even bump yourself. In that case, you don't have to pay anything because you would have to pay those two coins back to yourself. Then if there is no other space available on this bump track, no more bumping is allowed until the end of the round. If you don't have any more meeples on your character card or there are no valid spaces on the game board, you need to pass. When all players pass, the city phase is over. Before we talk about all the locations on the game board, we need to talk about drawing and discarding the cadaver cards. When you draw cadaver cards from any cadaver deck, let's say you need to draw three cards from the cemetery deck, you can choose any number of those cards, even zero. Then, for the chosen cards, you need to pay the cost, which is in the upper left corner. Sometimes the cards are for free. And then you have two options. You can either gain expertise or the materials depicted on the card. The cards you have not chosen have no effect on you. When you gain materials, you place them on this decomposition track in your laboratory. The only exception are bones, which never decompose and they have their own slot. All other materials are placed into the section indicated on the card. Each section can contain maximum 15 materials. If you gain more, you have to discard. Again, there is an exception for bones and you can only have maximum 12 of those. Then you have to discard the cards together with the cards you have not chosen. When you discard the cards, there is no discard deck. Simply take all those cards and place them on the bottom of the corresponding deck in any order you want. Now I will briefly explain all the actions in the game. When you take the cemetery action, you can draw and resolve three cards from the cemetery cadaver deck. The materials you can find in a cemetery are obviously quite decomposed. At public square, you can find cadavers only after an execution event. But as you can see, the materials are very fresh. When you take this action, you have to pay a franc and then you can take and resolve one of the cards. Then do not replenish that space. Remember, it will only get replenished after an execution. In hospital, you have three options. When you decide to volunteer, you simply gain two reputation and one humanity. When you decide to work in a hospital, you will get paid based on your expertise according to this small table. The third option in a hospital is to retrieve a cadaver card. Based on your reputation, 
you can either gain no card at all or one card if your reputation is higher than 7 and if your reputation is higher than 15 you can either take one card for free or you can pay one franc and you can retrieve two cards. When you visit the morgue location you need to pay one franc and then you can take two cards from this deck and resolve any number of those cards. When you visit Academy you have four options. First one is to do some basic research which means you can take one of these face-up cards and replace that card with the new one. If you take the advanced research action in addition to one of the face-up cards you also gain one expertise. Then if you decide to give lectures to students if you send your assistant there you will get one reputation and one coin as a salary. If you send scientists there, you get two reputation and one franc as a salary. And finally, if you donate to the academy, you can donate from one to three francs and for each franc you get one reputation. When you visit Slaughterhouse, you simply get some animal materials. You can substitute these animal materials for almost any human materials. If you feel that you're becoming a bigger monster than the one you're trying to build, you can visit the church to regain some humanity. If you send the assistant to the church, you can simply draw one of these face-up cards and replace it with the new one. If you send scientist, in addition to the one card, you also gain one humanity. When you come to the marketplace, you can do any number of these actions as many times as you want or as you can afford. You can sell two bones for one franc. You can sell three materials from your preservance area for two francs. These materials have to be in this preservance area. You cannot sell materials from this decomposition track. Then for two francs you can buy a jar and place the jar token into your laboratory with this uncharged side up. And finally for one franc you can buy an ice block. If you don't have an ice block simply put one token into this spot. If you have an ice block and it's half melted, simply flip it to the other side. When you take this first player action, take the first player token. The meeple in this location cannot be bumped and when all players pass, you can take this meeple and put it into any legal location on a game board, even bump someone and resolve the action. When you visit docks, you can choose any of these three phase up cards, then you need to pay the cost and resolve the effect of the card. Be aware that these are not cadaver cards and sometimes you have more options than on those cadaver cards. Then after resolving, discard the card and draw the new one from the dog's deck. In the dark valley you simply commit a murder. You lose humanity and you also gain a police token. Then you gain the listed materials which are obviously very fresh. Place the police token next to your character card. If you already have two police tokens, you cannot take this action. However, at any time you can pay three francs to remove all your police markers. In addition to the action spaces on the game board, there are four action spaces on the laboratory board. When you decide to practice, you simply gain one expertise. When you donate blood, add three cubes of blood, these red cubes, to the stage one on your laboratory board. When you take the repair action, you can remove up to three damage markers from any parts of the monster. And when you take this action, you can charge your laden jars. When you use assistant, you can flip up to two laden jars to their charged side. If you use a scientist, you can charge up to three laden jars. In the laboratory phase, players will build parts of the monster body, then they will have a chance to throw a switch and bring those parts to life, and finally they can preserve some materials. When you build the parts of the body, first you have to build this muscle part and then you can add the skin. So you build those parts in two steps. When building the body parts, consult your anatomy card. First, Choose the part of the body and look at the corresponding side of the anatomy card. This one is for building the muscle part and this one is for finishing the body part and adding the skin. 
In order to build the selected body part, you need to have some minimal required expertise and you also need to have the required number of materials. Let's say I want to start building the second hand. I need to discard all the required materials and you can always substitute this orange material, the animal material, for any other missing human material. Because I need three brown cubes and I only have two in this decomposition track, I need to substitute one orange for one brown. Now, when you discard materials, always note the decomposition stage of the most decayed material you use. So in my example, I'm using stage 3 materials. Then I can add the body part to the operating table. Or in case I would be building the part with the skin, I would simply flip that part to the skin side. And then I would immediately score the victory points based on the decomposition stage of the most decayed material. Because I have used the stage 3 materials, I would need to look into this column and score this number of victory points. However, because I have also used the animal material, I will be given a negative victory points as well, so in this case one negative point. When you add skin to the body parts, you also need blood, and blood can only be in the stage 1 or stage 2 of the decomposition track. If you wouldn't have enough red cubes, you can only substitute them with the animal materials which are in the stage 1 or stage 2 sections. You can never use the animal materials from the stage 3 and stage 4 areas as a substitution for blood. And finally, anytime you build a part of the monster body, you also get one expertise. You can build as many body parts as you can afford and for each body part built, gain that expertise. Then, if you have at least one completed body part, that's the body part with the skin side up, you can throw the switch one time. With throwing the switch, you can bring the completed body parts to life. To do that, you can flip up to three charged laden jars to their discharged side and roll the dice. For each discharged jar, you will roll two grey dice. After rolling dice, you can use these research cards for a dice mitigation. You can use as many as you want. Now, for each lightning symbol, you have to place the corresponding number of damage markers on the body parts. Place the marker one at a time, and you can place it on any body part you want. If you can, you have to place the damage marker on the undamaged body parts first. If you have to place the second damage marker on a body part, you have to downgrade it. If you downgrade the body part, which is already completed and is already alive, simply remove the live token. If you decide to downgrade the completed body part, which is not alive yet, flip it to the muscle part. And if you decide to downgrade the muscle part, simply remove that part from the operating table. When you downgrade a body part and that body part still remains on the operating table, immediately remove both damage markers from that body part before you place additional damage markers. If you roll one or more of these broken heart symbols, simply lose one humanity. You always lose just one humanity, even if you roll multiple symbols. And finally, for each alive symbol on dice, you can place one alive marker on the completed body part of the monster. Each body part can have maximum one alive token and any excess tokens are simply lost. And then the last step of the lab phase is to preserve materials. You can move any number of the brown and purple cubes to this preservation space, but keep in mind you can have maximum nine cubes there. You can sell these materials in the future rounds. The last phase of the round is the reset phase, and the first step is the decompose step. If you have the full ice, simply flip it to the half melted side, and you can completely skip the decompose phase. And in case you already have the half melted ice, simply discard the token. However, if you don't have the ice token at all, 
discard all the materials from the stage 4 and discard all the blood cubes from the stage 2. Then move all other materials to the next stage. Then reset the game board. First, discard and replenish the cards from the hospital, from the docks, from the academy and also from the St. Roche Church. Draw as many cards from the hospital deck as there are players in the game and place the pile onto the corresponding space. Then replenish all the empty spaces in the academy, St. Roche and also in the docks. Finally, discard the cards from the public square but do not replenish these cards. Then return all the meeples to the character cards, discard the event card for the current round and return any event markers back from the game board and advance the Captain Meeple one space along the story track. The game ends when this Captain Meeple reaches the last space on this story track or when one or more players bring their monster to life. That means at the end of the lab phase all six parts of the body are alive. At the end of the game in addition to the victory points gained over the course of the game, add the victory points for the body parts which are alive. That means those are the body parts with these alive markers. So in this example, for the head and the torso, it's additional 14 and 12 victory points. Then if players gained any objective tokens during the game, they would get 10 victory points for each. Then look at the humanity, reputation and the expertise dials and gain or lose victory points based on the current position of those dials. This player would gain 9 victory points for humanity, full 20 points for reputation and 15 points for the expertise. If your humanity would be in these negative numbers, you can actually lose victory points. And if the captain reached the end of this story track, the player with the highest humanity gains additional 5 victory points. Each player can have maximum 3 humanity and 3 research cards. If you would draw the fourth one, first you have to discard one of the existing ones. Playing these cards is always optional. They offer some one-time effects and also some additional attributes. In addition, these research cards can be used after rolling the dice and these effects can actually mitigate those dice rolls. When you have to increase your attributes, you always move them in a clockwise direction. If you lose attributes, you move them in the counterclockwise direction. If this humanity gets to the negative 10 level, you can no longer gain or lose humanity. Then there are several types of icons on these dials. These victory point markers do nothing during the game, they are only awarded at the end of the game. This reputation symbol indicates that when the humanity dial reaches this space, you can increase your reputation by 1. Then when you reach this space, you can increase your reputation again by 1. However, these effects are reversible. That means that if your humanity would drop down, you lose this reputation. Similarly, if your humanity reduces even more, you even lose this reputation. Other dials work in the same manner, so in this example, if you reach level 7 of your reputation, you get one more assistant, and if you reach level 11, you can change one scientist for an assistant, so you will have two scientists and two assistants. However, if your reputation drops down, you lose that scientist or you switch the scientist back to the assistant. And that's how you play the Abomination game. If you would have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer your questions. If you like the show, please subscribe. My name is Branislav Berec, you've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.